So it says here that In the Light was born with glimmers of dreamy pop among deep layers of sonic harmonic textures. Would you care to elaborate on that? Sure. In the Light um, was also born with um, sort of like a prayer. Um, somebody, the guy that mastered this record said that it sounds like I'm saying a prayer for everyone kind of that listens to it. Um, so it, it is, it's sort of like a sonic prayer of um, positivity and beauty and sort of like a deep emotional um, feeling. Absolutely. It also has wonderful sonic qualities to it though. Now you are uh, predominantly you hear it. Really a hear guitar it. player. Yes, I'm predominantly a guitar player. But you played, you said you played drums too? Yeah, I played drums. I didn't play drums on the record. Right. Um, because my drumming is very, like, I know what I do, but I wanted to do something different. So um, I played everything else, though, aside from some guitars. I played all the keyboards. And, and you stuff. do all the voices? I do all the vocals, oh, right. all the arranging. And, yep. And the bass that we used on it is really kick-ass. It's really bassy. Is do, do you play record. like um, like a, a play electric the bass? Um, no, we played Taurus pedals. Oh, okay. So it's like this really uh, um, bowel turning sort of bass sound. It's, yeah. <laughs> it sounds very cool. It sounds very cool. Um, Stirring in many <laughs> different ways. It says here, though, you used uh, a cellist, Jane, Jane Scarpentoni. Scarpentoni, who played with Lou Reed and Kristen Hirsch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of people, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just like to name three out of probably a hundred Well, I have heard with. some of the record. Uh, you oh, had right, sent online. me a digital rip of the record. Nice. So right. uh, I did hear the cellos. The I wasn't sure. Right, of this. right. It is a different feel now. Right. The record, like the actual music, is sort of floating um, up here, and it's it's a nice big sound. But the bass is there's almost like a separation between the bass and the. the oh, I music. love that! I love when you hear tremendous separation in music. It's it's a it, the bass like made it. The bass pedals. Is it hard to accomplish something like that it in, was in the studio? It was hard to accomplish this record. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, wanting to make something, having a vision, and then trying to actually accomplish that, there must be a lot of trial and error, listening back and going, "Not this isn't exactly what I'm thinking. Well, actually, the interesting thing about this record was um, Kevin, the producer, wanted to, there are two songs that we recorded um, that were more, I have like all different styles of music that I write. I write heavy sort of, not metal songs, but like heavy, dark, like rock songs. I write super pop songs and then I write this sort of dreamy, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but ambient, eth ambient ethereal music. Ethereal music. Yeah, yeah. And so he put two rock songs on, um, we recorded these two rock songs and I was listening back to what we had done and I just, the album just didn't communicate to itself. Okay. And I realized that I wanted to pull those two songs because I didn't want to make a rock record. Um, I didn't, he, and it turned out when I presented that to him, he, he had those two songs on there because he felt like it would make the record safer just in case, you know, someone wasn't into the ambient of fear. And I didn't want to make a safe record. I wanted to make something that was different and unique. And Do you feel that that's part of a producer's role, though, to direct the, um, the content? Artists? Yeah, I don't take direction very well in that regard. I mean, there's certain areas that he was amazing. He was able to write parts. But, um, is that the final playlist? No. Uh, no, actually. There's songs on here that didn't make it. Okay. It's close. close. Heaven and Dive aren't on. Really? It was hard. It was, it was hard, hard to, to cut it down, we sure. Had, we had 13 songs and we had 11. And then um, 
I had to move on from Kevin actually, and uh, then with Gareth I had to get down to six songs, so I just kept refining it. But um, yeah, I didn't want to make a safe record. I wanted to make something that was pushing, you know, in some sort of, I don't know, I just feel like to be unique and to find your own voice in music is really, really important. I've had a lot of conversations about this with other people recently. It's difficult. Everyone's copying each other and right. stuff. And I love it, but I'm really inspired by bands like Grizzly Bear and also by um, Fleet Foxes who are taking, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, but then completely, you know, going in an opposite direction with it. So, um, I, know, I just think it's really important to take chances in music. It's like our job as artists to uh, to explore 